Yeah, I'm now thinking about showing just the general stripping stuff. Uh, what I like to use. And normally I'm going uh, in with a pin brush before. Just to get like most of the nuts out before I'm starting with uh, the metal comb. Because then it's, yeah, this can pull more on the fur. So I'm first going in with this one and then I'm going in with um, just a basic metal comb. This is the same as the big one, just a smaller size and a little bit more used. Um, and then I'm usually after this one, I'm going in with the Spratz number 72. Uh, this is a really good comb to uh, remove uh, like excess undercoat uh, and then for stripping I'm using uh, finger condoms like this uh, you can also use gloves and also some are using stones instead uh, so it's what you prefer I like using these ones just because it's simple and easy and then I'm having, uh, this is the scissors that I'm using the most. You are not supposed to cut the uh, fur of a cairn, but it's necessary like around the anus and also the paws. For example, if you're living in a country with a lot of snow in the winter, you don't want to get like the snow that is stuck underneath the paws of the dogs uh, so then I'm usually trimming uh, around the paws you can see that it's a little bit curved and also a blunt end so it's really nice uh, and then I'm using baby powder this is just in another jar um, for getting a better grip uh, when I'm stripping for example, I'm using it on the tail and the ears to get a better grip. I can show you the scissors that I own. Uh, um, as I said before, I'm not using it that much on the can. It's mostly this paw scissor that I told you about earlier in the video. Uh, occasionally, I use this thinning scissor from Solingen. They have really good brand, this one from Germany. They have really good quality scissors. Uh, you can use it underneath the belly on the sensitive areas. I know that people are using it on the end of the tail. Just uh, for a show dog, I would try to strip most of it, uh, but for a non-show dog, I don't see the point of putting the dog through pain or stripping on the belly and also the tip of the tail. Here I also have some other types of scissors that are also really nice. For a can, I would have a paw scissor and a thinning scissor. Yeah, with shampoos and stuff I would recommend not shampooing your dog at all just when it's necessary I've been only shampooing my dog three times for the time that she's been living and she's almost one and a half now first time was when she was vomiting in her cage and she smelled like vomit and the second two times was when she rolled in poop. Uh, so normally if she's dirty, I'm just rinsing her off with lukewarm water. But if you need to give the can a shower, then I would suggest getting like the harsh or rough coat, rough coarse coat shampoos. This is a three step one. So it's shampoo, substance, builder and conditioner. Uh, it's also having a setting spray. Uh, this is just the travel sized ones. 
uh, my mom also has the bigger one it's really good this one I like it a lot uh, but I'm using this one a little bit more uh, just because it's not a reason why I'm using it more uh, but this one is more affordable it's cheaper it works okay so remember at least when you're going to give your can a bath take like a harsh coat or like a shampoo that is for the coat of your can because otherwise it will get ruined but not as ruined if as if you would shave or clip your can